Come on now. Come on, come on. Get in the Lord, yes. Let's get our singers, musicians, everybody, instrument players on this platform. And I want you to walk out of your pew and walk around and shake a few hands while we're getting ready to go before the Lord with song and praise and worship. Come on, let everybody around you know how glad you are to see them. But like I always say, don't you lie to them now. church today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Come on now. Hallelujah. Let's have Thank some you, church Jesus. this morning. Thank you know, you, last Jesus. night, last night I was up here and we was worshiping and praising the Lord, you know, That's and uh, I was trying to explain myself and I kind of had like a, a, a mental block. Um, you know, a lot of times we do forget where we came from. A lot of times we forget where we come from. And a lot of times people stand back and look at Certain people, and they're like, good Lord, why do they praise the Lord like that? Come on, that's Well, if right. you'd walk down the road they walk down, then you'd have the shout they have. Amen. Hallelujah. And for that, we give God all the glory. Amen. I never shall forget the day. Y'all help us this morning. Y'all, y'all worship the Lord with us this morning. We're here, we're here to, uh, to, to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're not here for just another meeting. Amen. Page 130, choir. Let's get ready. Long years ago, when out in sin, I had no hope, no 
Well, I heard about Lord, we thank you this morning for that thing, for the sacrifice, everything you've done for the church, God, we give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To walk again. this morning and I want us to sing that from the depths of our heart because some of you may not realize just how much of a price a heavy price was paid from the brutal beating of the Savior everything that you have today at your fingertips the blessings the rewards our eternal salvation it was all paid for through the brutal beating of our Savior that victory that we sing about this morning somebody had to pay the price for that victory you as an American citizen, you have to understand there were the blood of many young soldiers and other men and women of God and other men who have fought on battlefields and such as that. And they paid the heaviest price. They paid the price with their life. The blood of soldiers, veterans, and what have you so that you and I today could have the freedoms we have here in America. And I can tell you there's no other sacrifice has ever been quite like the one that Christ paid for us, and he gave us victory. And I want you to understand how beautiful that that is this morning. Let us sing that. We're going we're gonna to lead out and sing that chorus this morning. Slow it down just a little bit without any music. I want you to lift your hearts and hands before the Lord, and I want you to sing it with us, and I want you to mean it as you sing it. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He Yeah. 
victory. Beneath the cleansing. We're gonna sing that again because it sounds so beautiful. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. him this morning. Lift your hearts and hands. Come on and give him praise this morning as this choir is dismissed. I don't want you to miss a beat. Just lift your hands this morning if you really love him and give him the praise. Come on, give him glory if you believe he deserves it this morning. Lift your hands and say I love you if you really mean it this morning. I can tell you that he's been much better to you and me than we've been to him. And if there's anybody that deserves the praise, it is him. The preacher last night mentioned, brought up the fact that people, when they love football teams and basketball teams and whatever thing they like, they begin to talk about it a lot. And a lot of times whenever there's a certain player, they just brag on him. Oh, I love this guy or that guy. Oh, he's the best. He's, he can hit every three-point shot. Oh, that guy, he's one of the best punters. He's one of the best tight ends. You know, a lot of times they brag on certain aspects. But I can tell you something this morning that just blesses my heart to know. That when you know what God has done in you, you have no problem whatsoever bragging about everything that he's done. I remember several years, I just want to testify a minute. I remember several years ago I had a relative that had come to the church where we were pastoring at the time. And that morning we had... We'd sang, we'd had church and preached and Spirit of God moved and he sat in the pew and he never went to the altar, but he sat there and I could tell conviction was on him. That was a Sunday morning and then Sunday night rolled around. We got up and we began to sing and Brother Steve, it wasn't very long. That seed was planted Sunday morning and that night God began to use that song to water that seed that was planted that morning and began to speak to him, began to bless him, began to strengthen him. And all of a sudden, right in the middle of one of those songs, the Spirit of God began to move mightily. I saw it as the hot tears began to flow down his face. I, be I watched as his hands began to shake. And I saw the Spirit of God all over him. And I said, oh boy, I knew God was touching him. I knew the Lord was dealing with him. It wasn't long. He began to cry and lean over in that pew. And a few brothers and sisters around began to reach their hand out to him the way that Peter and John did whenever that, that palsy man was laying at the gate of the temple called Beautiful. They began to reach out to him. I want you to know that a lot of times we tell people, get up, brother, get up, sister, get up. We tell them to get up. But like I preached many years ago, you got to have a hand after the command. You can't just tell people to get up if you're not willing to reach your hand and give them the help to get up. 
And he be, these, these, these brothers and sisters began to reach out their hand. They began to lay hands on him, began to touch him. All of a sudden, I don't know, something within that chemistry of prayer and the Spirit of God, and you began to watch him break under the power of God. Do you know what needs to happen with some people? They need to break. They need to break your pride, break all of your anger, break your bitterness, break through from your past, break whatever's binding you, break the chains, break the pain, break the hurt, break the depression, break anxiety, break all of the hatred. But come on, somebody, and say amen. But I watched the Spirit of God began to break in him. And the next thing you know, I watched him stand, and this was so unlike him. You know, when you start seeing people do things they don't normally do, you have to equate it. It's got to be God or something going on. I got to figure it out. But the pound God was moving on him. It wasn't long that he made his way down to that altar that night. He began to pray and touch God, and God touched him. After that service that night, he got to talking to me. This relative of mine, he said, oh, I felt something tonight I have never felt before. He said, I've been to church before, but I never felt this. I've heard preaching, but I've never felt this. I've heard singing, but I've never felt this. Do you know you can go to church your whole life? There are people that have, there are preachers that got kids that have sat in church all their life, but until you finally let go and let God touch you and let that break through comma you don't even know what mama's been serving the Lord for you don't even have a clue you don't understand it but how many of you know you gotta get it for yourself you can't just take somebody else's word for it you say chocolate pudding tastes good let me have a taste of it but the power of God began to move on him and he told me that night he said oh I felt something like never before and I thought to myself well we will see we shall see let me tell you there's a lot of folk that have gone down to the altar and they got what I call a case of the do betters but they never got a case of the get better come on now they got down in that altar and they prayed a little while just enough to pray off conviction but you can tell whenever somebody taps into something beyond getting a little bit better and that night I know that he did uh, because he began to tell me I feel like I need to make amends uh, he said I got some people I gotta apologize to he said I got some things I need to do and that night on the way home he had a long ride home uh, he told me later he said I called people that I worked with uh, people that I was at odds with uh, people that hated me and I hated them uh, and I didn't care he said I got on the phone uh, and he said look uh, he said, I know we don't like each other. You try to go the other way. We told the boss we don't want to work with each other. He said, but I wanted you to know I got saved tonight. And he said, I just want to apologize for everything that I've done, everything I've said. Let me tell you, when you start making your wrongs right, when you start reconciling your differences, whenever change is born in your life, it is a proof positive that the Spirit of God has moved in. Let me tell somebody this morning, if if you haven't had a change, you need to go back down to the order and dip again. You need to do like Naaman and dip down in Jordan one more time until you come up clean from your leprosy of sin. Some of you need to say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of watching my family drowned in sin. They need a change. Let me tell you what our families need is get in an atmosphere where the Holy Ghost is being poured out. Oh, I'm telling you, Man, I'm going to tell you right now, I feel like I could punch my way straight through the flames of hell. I feel like I could punch out some devils right now. How about you? Oh, I'm telling you this morning what our church needs, what our world needs, what our people need. They need to feel the very divine presence of God. But I'm telling you that when you start seeing that change, that transformation, you know that God is working. You know whenever a plant begins to flourish and the leaves are blooming and you see the flowers blooming, you know that there's something going on on the inside. There's life. 
people that tell me and I don't mean to be hurtful here and I sure hope you don't take it that way as most of you know me I'm not a hurtful mean preacher but I'm going to tell you when you come to me oh preacher I'm just shy like that preacher I'm just kind of timid like that let me tell you something whenever you get like one preacher said he said there ain't no way you can stand in the middle of the road and get hit by an 18 wheeler hauling logs going 80 miles an hour without being transformed uh, and let me tell you there is something greater than an 18 wheeler Amen. Boiling, bailing down the road. Uh, the power of God, when the power of God gets on you, it'll do something inside of you that'll make you lift your hand and say, Praise the Lord. And you'll be looking at yourself, What in the world? I ain't never done that before. Let me tell you the reason is, uh, it's because when the Lord begins to transform you and you become like the old saints would say, Born again. Uh, let me tell you, Amen. God takes it, He renews you, He revives you, He restores you. I wonder, is there anybody that's says Lord I was drowning I was dying but during this last few days during the last few months I've come up out of my grave and I left the grave clothes I'm leaving it all behind because I know that my redeemer lives <laughs> you might as well go ahead and have church you might as well go ahead and worship the Lord. Oh, this ain't protocol. Good. This ain't the norm. Good. We need to break out of cookie cutter religion. Somebody say amen. We come in and do our few songs, do the same old thing all the time, and don't have no more move of God just to get a number seven feel good, a number five feel good. I'd like for God to just come in. You ever seen when they do a fundraiser? And when they raise more money than they, than they really needed, and they got their little thermometer, and they show the top of the thermometer just blowing off, huh? I'd like to see the Holy Ghost just come in and blow the top clean off the thermometer. And people leave and say, I was expecting God to do something, but my Lord, I didn't know it was going to be that good. I'm just trusting the Lord this morning. I'm trusting the Lord for your families. I'm trusting the Lord for your own walk. Trusting the Lord for deliverance. Come on, let's get real. We are living in a culture and a society that has done its dead level best to divide us. Come on now, destroy us. Come on, but let me tell you something. God created his people. We are all of one blood. Come on now. If you are part of that blood washed throne, you are part of that body. You are his, his creation. Yes. But the world has done its best to divide us, to destroy us, because that's exactly what he wants to do. He's tried to destroy marriages. He's tried to destroy relationships between mothers and daughters and children and fathers. But I am here to tell you this morning that the one thing that I know what God wants to do, we serve a unifying God. Mark it down with pen, paper, and ink. I said we serve a unifying God. Whenever the family is in chaos and everything's going crazy, all the world is a mess, you're, everybody in the home is arguing and nobody can get along, you bring the Spirit of God in there, He will unify. You come on and say amen. You say, well, they may not serve the Lord. I understand that. But God has a way of when people begin to yield to the Lord of unifying because His Spirit unifies. His Spirit is able to make things flow and work. You see, I'm going to share this with you. I was sharing with the preacher, I think it was last night. I had a preacher many years ago, he was a good close friend of mine, great man of God. He said, Brother Myers in pastoring, he said, if you ever see a time in your church where the spirit stops moving, he said, don't worry about what people are saying down the road. Don't worry about all the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. He said, but if you ever stop, if the spirit of God stops moving in the church, that's when you start sweating. He said, because what I found after all of these years of, of pastoring, he said, little fires of troubled problems, hypocrites, tears among the wheat, I mean issues are gonna come. Paul said grievous wolves are gonna come in among the flock, not trying to spare, if you will. But he said, when you got the spirit of God moving, he said, it'll put out all them little fires. You know why? 
because when the spirit of God's moving, you ain't got a bunch of dead head church members sitting around, looking around, trying to find a problem with everybody. Because you're in tune with the spirit and you ain't worried about what she's got on. You ain't worried about what he did last week. You ain't worried about whether they've been to church in a month. You don't even care because all you can think about is getting in the river where the spirit of God flows. Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to have to need a week's vacation after all this is over with. Huh? I am so ever thankful for the sweeping spirit and move of the Holy Ghost that we feel. Mm -hmm. Now I understand whenever them old saints got to feeling it and they didn't know what to say, they just said, mm -hmm. Some of them old moaning saints and groaning say to, mm -hmm. Because sometimes you feel something down the word may not come, but you're still feeling. I'd love, I'd love to see the wind of Pentecost. You, you ever been or seen one of those games? We did this when we were in high school. And we would do the wave. I ain't talking about this. But it would start on one side of the gymnasium. And you watch them. And they stand and sit down. And you go all the way around. That was one of the coolest things to me. And I can tell you, I've seen a spiritual wave before. Can I testify to you for a minute? Might as well. I don't know what I'm doing anyway. I don't know if I'm preaching, testifying, exhorting, or what I'm doing really. But years ago, we was at a meeting, and that particular meeting, it was a time, it was a very difficult time for a lot of pastors and preachers and preachers' wives and leaders. And this church had a revival meeting, and the place was packed out. It was Gulfview Church of God, if I'm not mistaken. Not Day, Daystar, maybe. Daystar Church of God. And right before this meeting, one of the pastors and the wife is a friend of mine. They were going through a mess in their church with some people trying to run the church, wouldn't let him pastor the church. They got so mad at the preacher that they went in and sold all the pews out from underneath him. And they came and didn't even have no pews to have church in. They had come into this meeting. They were broken. That's the kind of mess that folks were dealing with, stuff like people were dealing with all kind of trouble. But they came into that meeting that night, and it's full of leaders and church uh, preachers and preachers' wives and people that are just hungry for God and people that knew how to have church. And I want you to know that night I saw something I've never seen before, not quite exactly the same way because I know the way the Spirit of God moves is never exactly the same exact temperature, time, way, everything uh, again. But that night, Brother John... I, I got up on the platform. Some of you may have heard me tell this before. I've never been much of a guitar player. I just kind of strum along and make noise. But a brother that was there, he had a really expensive guitar, and he, he said, I'll let, let you use my guitar. Boy, I had that guitar strapped around my neck that night. And I was standing up on the platform, and uh, this, this group was up there singing, and uh, I watched what we call it the Holy Ghost falling. Some of y'all might think that's plum crazy. But we call it the Holy Ghost falling. That don't mean he fell down. That means the Holy Ghost just fell. I watched that night the Holy Ghost fall four major times. And it's a big deal if you just see the Holy Ghost fall in some churches one time in a year. But I watched it four times in one song. Power of God fell in that place. But on that fourth time, I mean, there were people that were running and shouting and glorifying God. I'm standing there strumming that guitar, and here I am. I've, I've, the Lord's used me. I think I was preaching at the time, but in all these years, I had never ran before. I've seen a whole lot of running. I've seen other people do it, but I never took off running around the church. Never. And I'm just one of those people, if I don't feel it, it ain't going to happen. I thank God for people that have that mindset. If it ain't God, then I ain't. But I also thank God for people that'll take a step of faith too. But that night all of a sudden, man, I'm playing that guitar and started feeling something all over me. I feel a quaking and a shaking and a stirring. 
All of a sudden, I felt it go all the way down to my feet. Man, my feet was shaking. I felt, I just, I feel it now, praise God. I might just run around now, praise God. And all of a sudden, I got the feeling that Sister Joanne, Holy Ghost got all over me. Man, I'm telling you, I, I couldn't even find a guitar strap. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that guitar off. I threw that man's, his expensive guitar out on the floor, praise God. And you say, thank God for God's grace. He must have put a pillow under it because nothing happened to it. Man, I threw that guitar out on the floor and all of a sudden, I didn't even know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing, but I cut loose. I come running down this aisle and it was shaped kind of like this. It was three rows of pews. Man, I went bust out. I took off running wide open. Wow! Running around the church. Sister Lee Greer. She, she had some real long hair. I remember that. You know why? Because when I ran by her, her hair like a mane, like on a horse, it hit me in the face. Wham! I felt it, but boy, I'm a striding and riding. I'm a moving on. Praise God. And I'll never forget. And my wife can tell you the same thing. The platform in that church is about that far away from where the front pew is. Man, I come around that church running down that aisle. Wow! And all of a sudden, I'm here right there between these pews right here was one big brother. <coughs> brother Wendell McGuire. Man, that joker. He was one of the funniest guys you ever met, but he was about as wide as he was tall. <laughs> now, some of you are like Kobe Bryant or whoever, but I grew up in the Michael Jordan days. My mama even bought me an official dollar store brand of Michael Jordans. But I couldn't jump like Jordan. Man, when I come running down that aisle, don't at me. You might be next. I come running down that aisle about the time I got up there where Brother Wendell was, Brother John. I don't even know what in the world. I jumped, and I jumped from there and landed on the platform. Man, I'm telling you, I never felt something. It was almost like I felt like the hand of God got up underneath me and the Spirit of God began to move. I am telling you that when people put their heart and their mind in worship, you began to feel something. I felt something. I ain't never felt quite like it. I think it was about 2010. We have a video online of this. Some of you remember when Brother Richardson was here. I don't even think he was associate pastor at the time, but we had a six foot, I think he's about six foot five, six foot seven Presbyterian preacher. I, did y'all hear that? A Presbyterian preacher. I'll say that again, a Presbyterian preacher. They don't shout, they don't jump, they don't speak in tongues. But that night, Brother Kurt Roden was here preaching. You remember that? Well, we got a video if you want to see it. But, but that preacher was sitting on the front row. And Brother Kurt Roden was going down this list of everything God was. How he's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He, oh boy, he, he had preached that before. And he knew all them names. Oh, man, the spirit of the Lord began to move. I was standing right about over here. Be careful where you stand over here because it might get hot right over here. But I'm standing over there, and I don't know what in the world. I'm just lost in the presence of the Holy Ghost, worshiping the Lord, giving God praise. And Brother Richardson, he's over here. And when Brother Richardson would get happy, Brother Richardson would start going like this. Woo! Hopping up and down, praising the Lord. All of a sudden, power of God fell, and Brother Richardson took off running around the church. And if you watch the video, it was almost like God had a perfect time of like that, he took off running, I took off running, and I'm telling you, we was moving. Both of us was moving wide open. Brother Richardson come flying through this way, and I can't wait, one of us came flying this way, and I'm not kidding you when I tell you, it was just like, yeah. Yeah. all of a sudden, that six foot whatever, man, he's a tall preacher. That Presbyterian preacher got up with a big old smile on his face. He got looking around, he said, I believe he thought to himself, I don't know what they're feeling, but I want to feel it too. Let me tell you something. Huh? Whenever you let go and let God have his way, this might not be for everybody. Everybody might not understand it. But let me tell you, if you want to have, you want to be in heaven, if you want to feel what heaven's like, huh? you just begin to praise it because heaven will come down and touch you in a way that will get you ready for what it's going to be like when you get there.
Some of you are going to leave here saying, that's the craziest preacher I ever heard before. Let me tell you what. You know why? Because, Brother David, I'm crazy for the Lord. Sister Amanda was testifying. I watched a little piece of that again this morning. And she was telling about somebody and how somebody said, y'all get too crazy, you get too carried away in your worship and all of that. And Sister Amanda said, but if that person that was criticizing understood where they came from, Brother Dan, the media man, let me tell you something. All it would take is somebody, oh, you go to a crazy church. Buddy, let me tell you. When I had a stroke, isn't that what you had a stroke? When I was strung out on drugs, had a stroke, my family gathered around not knowing whether I'm going to live or die. Don't you come up in my face telling me I'm crazy. Because I'm going to tell you, if God did in you what he did in me, you might think, If he did in you what he did in me, I believe you'd praise him too. <laughs> Sister Tracy, you had a lot of reason to praise the Lord. I've been knowing you a long time. But I'm going to tell you, if you ever had a reason to praise the Lord, you really got a reason to praise the Lord. If you look back just a few weeks ago, even a few days ago, and if this thing going wrong, that thing going wrong, and all these different things. But still, look where I am. Look what God has done. This ain't going to talk to everybody. This ain't going to speak to everybody. But there's a few of you here that can identify with this. There were some gainsayers. There were some haters. There were some Facebook stalkers. There were some people talking about me. There were people that were wondering, spreading rumors and lies about me. But look at me now. You might be easy. You might say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm still dealing with that. Well, what you need to do, those of you that have been going through that, just make a public announcement. Just get it over with. Go on, make you a status today. And just keep it real simple. Keep watching. Keep looking. Keep stalking. Because while you're doing all that, I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going to keep on serving. I'm going to keep on living. I'm going to keep on praising. And our church is going to give God glory. You see, I already know how it is. Whenever other people ain't experiencing revival, they'll be watching church videos and they'll find every kind of fault they can about Grace Street Church of God. But you know this. Grace Street Church of God ain't worried about your criticism. I ain't worried about what you got to say because there ain't the one that I'm trying to please Ain't one but I'm trying to touch a hem of his garment. And that's the Lord God Almighty. And as long as he's happy with me, as long as he's satisfied with my praise, that's good enough for me. What platform? You say, Pastor, there are folks that don't like our choir. There are folks that don't like our music. There are folks that don't like our shout. You know what? That's fine. Let them find them a dead church. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to give God praise. If there's ever a time in my life and I can feel something stirring and a brewing in my spirit, I feel like telling you this morning that just because you feel good right now, it don't mean you're not going to face a storm. But you're going to have to have a test so you can have a testimony and it'll bring you out on the other side. I've talked to two different people in this church recently who've been going through an agony 
a place, a dark, deep place in their life. And I've shared the same counsel in a very similar regard. Sometimes the way out is to simply become an advocate for other people who are dealing with some of the same things you've dealt with. Sometimes it's to make a declaration that says, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. There are going to be a lot of ladies in the same place, sadly. There are going to be a lot of men in the same shoes, been through five or six relationships, maybe more, can't seem to figure out what direction to go. And there are going to be some people that can say, I've been there. It was a hard fight. There are going to be some people that can say, broke? Broke? Sit down, let's talk about broke. So broke that I didn't know what in the world I was going to do. And I'm trying to ration out meals to find out how I can make it all work. Trying to put off bills, trying to figure out which one to pay. Calling people up and saying, I, I'm sorry, but I don't have it. And them telling you, it's about to be cut off. Some that have had it cut off. Broke? Let me tell you what it feels like. But let me tell you, you can still be broke and blessed. I said, you can still be broke and blessed. Well, Pastor Myers, I was hoping I could get me a new Amber Crombie and Fitz outfit. I wanted to get me some new Jordans, and I was hoping I'd get me some brand new Levi's. But I'm still worn, wearing these old worn out rustler jeans uh, and these old raggedy tennis shoes. Uh, and that's all I got. But let me tell you, you can still be broke and blessed. Uh, you can still give God praise in the midst of all the pain and sorrow. You say, Pastor, we're doing everything we can. What you don't know, Brother Myers, we wanted to be in this revival, and we've done good to put gas money in the tank. Let me tell you, there are some of you while you were putting your last few dollars in the gas tank, you came to the house of God and God blessed you abundantly in your spirit. Uh, you see, you can't take that gas to the you can't take that gas to eternity. Come on, but you can but you can take what God's doing in you right now all the way to an eternal abode. I don't want to preach you to death this morning. But this is just whenever you begin to feel the Lord and it's bubbling up. Man, I got a message. I got a sermon. But you just, I'm one of those preachers that I'd rather obey the Lord and flow with the Spirit of God than just to go through the motions. I'm so tired of that. This past year, we nearly got caught up with all the, just going through the routine. And I'm going to tell you, if the church is going to experience revival, we've got to break out of routine. I want to challenge you something, and I want you to listen to me. Last night, we sat around the table for a little while enjoying a little bit of cake and hot dogs and stuff to celebrate my beautiful daughter-in-law's birthday. While we sat there, we began to talk about old stories, some things funny, you know, silly, but there are some things that are very serious. And I shared something with Sister Misty last night, and I said one of the things that we used to do years ago in a ministry capacity outside the church, we'd do a homeless ministry, and we'd go into the woods and talk to people go in different places, feeding people, doing different things, being the hands and feet of the Lord. And I would go to these different places in the woods. And one of the, one of the things that I found as a common consensus among a lot of the people we dealt with is, preacher, when it comes to Thanksgiving, we get so much food, we don't even know what to do with it. We're just being honest with you. All these different churches and organizations, they all bring us food. But when Thanksgiving is over with, then it's like everything stops. So when Easter rolls around, and a lot of times the churches that do it, they do it for their own publicity. That's coming from the in, honest, sincere lips of people that just get tired of the church taking advantage of their poor brokenness, trying to capitalize on the fact that look what we did instead of look what the Lord should do, what the Lord is doing through a church. 
But one of the common consensus that I heard from a lot of people in this was this. These churches, they build churches and they want us to go to the church. But what they don't understand, some of us, we don't have bicycles, we don't have transportation, we don't have a means, we don't even have the ability to go to some of these food banks if we wanted to. And he said one of the things that we began to figure out is that what the church needs to be able to do, the children of God, is to have little cell group ministries with outside the church that are the hands and feet of the Lord that are not expecting everybody to come here and let us entertain them, but we're willing to take what we get in here outside the four walls of the church. Right, is anybody here feeling what I'm saying? It's one thing for us to get happy to feel some goosebumps or some Holy Ghost bumps in here it's one thing to run and shout and rejoice but when we walk outside of there somewhere in this town somewhere in this city is someone that's being raped someone being molested there's alcoholism there is drug addiction there are families that are broken there are people that are just like you were that need the spirit of God and how dare we look at the world and say if you want it then come to the church sometimes a church has to take a step outside the walls of the church Amen. And be the hands and feet of God. So what are you saying, Brother Myers? It's time. It's time. It's time to do it again. It's time to do it again. Before this revival and before these meetings, I have been through the help of the Lord trying to groom this church to be prepared. I've preached consistently trying to encourage the body to understand that even in what you feel is worthlessness, helplessness, that there is something good inside of you that God can use for his glory and his manifested power. Amen. The Lord has been trying to groom you to understand that you can be used of the Lord. And there's a reason. Because I, I believe that the Lord wants us to do more than just have good church. You're looking at somebody, I love good church. I love it. Sometimes I wish I was still 25 years old because I'm going to tell you something. I'm a break dance in the Holy Ghost if you let me. I mean, I'm being silly. But you understand what I'm saying. I just, I can't get enough of it. When you feel God, man, if you ain't never felt it, please don't criticize me. But if you ever felt it, let me tell you something. Meth ain't got nothing on this. And you ain't even got to go to jail for it. Huh? But I believe it's time. This church has done some very inspirational things through the years. But this church has been fought very hard. This pastor, his pastor's wife, and his family has been fought very hard. All it takes is a vision, and a vision that is cast forth, a vision that is received, and then a vision that is carried out. And it takes willing people. I have shared with the church over the years that pastors typically have a dilemma of one of two things when it comes to getting something done or putting a person in a position. They either have somebody that is qualified but not willing or willing and not qualified. What do you mean, Brother Myers? Well, I'll put it to you like this. If you want the Lord to use you and you want to tell other people about deliverances, then you need to start getting the altar and getting some deliverance yourself so that you can be the inspiration to other people. But you said, Pastor, I thought you said that sometimes whenever we're not completely where we need to be. I'm not talking about that because there's a big difference between just continuing to shack up and sin, continuing to be an alcoholic, continuing to be a porn addict. There's a difference between that and not even trying and then trying to do the work of God. Does anybody feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? So what we need to do is we need to have a people that are willing, and I believe... I believe that we have a group of folks right here. I believe that are willing. Amen. Yes. Yes. I believe you're willing to worship God the way you've worshiped God during this meeting. I believe you're willing to do something more than just do it here in church. 
Over the years, we've done food bank ministries. We've done Laces of Grace ministry where we filled pickup bed of our trucks full of shoes. And you would have thought, oh, that's not that big of a deal. What an incredible ministry that turned out to be, going into the streets and giving shoes to people who didn't have any shoes. I think Sister Kathy and Brother Steve was with us one time when we went right down the road. It's right around the corner from here. A young lady that grew up in this neighborhood walking around with a giant hole in the bottom of her shoe. Her foot had worn through the sock and she was walking around like that. And some people would say, well, Pastor, some of them people choose these things. Yeah, you chose a lot of things too, didn't you? Sometimes all it takes is just to show the love of Christ for somebody to know that there's still a God. Sister Linda Geldner, one of the sweetest, awesomest, best, one of my church mamas, I love her like you wouldn't believe, and Sister Myers too, and but we'd have never known you, and you'd have never known us if it wasn't for a simple act of kindness. Her daughter Catherine was working at Burger King right here in Apopka. My wife and my daughter went into that Burger King, right? Was that it? KFC. Come on. Can I get a witness? And they went in there and showed her kindness. Ended up inviting her to church. For a long time, they would go over to the place she lived and pick her up and bring her to church. That's right. And it wasn't very long. Sister Linda came and visited. And then a little bit longer, before you know it, we got the hook in her mouth. And Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I'm glad. But just imagine, if we are not the hands and feet, we look around this church, I'm going to tell you something. We don't mention this a whole lot, but I want to, I want to remind you this morning that we got a building next door that's about 11,800 square feet or something. It's almost 12,000 square feet. The building's got some issues. We're paying for a building that we can't even use. But I, would, I want to tell you this. If the church can think a little bit outside of this small box mentality and say, God, if we could continue on this path of growth, we could easily launch into the deep, see God do something explosive, But we got to do more. We got to do more than just come and have good church. We got to go and be the church. And so I want you to be praying for me so that we can start getting the mind of God for the direction of God. How many will help me do that? Sincerely. Don't raise your hand and say you will if you're not. I'm a, how many would sincerely pray God give us direction? And it's one thing to pray. But I'm going to ask you to do more than just pray. But I'm going to ask you to be willing to do it. Because God may do something that we've never seen done before. He may do it in a way we've never seen. Or maybe something we've done in the past. I don't know. I just want to mind the Lord. I want to have a youth revival coming up. I want to see our young people getting the touch of God. I want to have a meeting just for them. A meeting that they can encourage their friends and family and and all of that to come to because we need revival. We need revival in this last day. I want to encourage some of you that have been on the fence and you say, I feel like I've got a ministry in my loins. I've had people that have come to me before and said, Pastor, I've always felt like God was one day going to use me to start a drug, a drug addict's ministry. I've always felt like God was going to use me to do this, this, and this. Listen, I know you may need to do some praying, and I don't want you to step outside of the will of God. I'm not asking you to do that, but you need to stop putting off so much stuff. You need to stop putting things off for eternity. Step out by faith. If you feel like God's put something in you, go to your pastor. Do, step outside of the bounds and let God move. I want to share a story with you. I almost forgot to tell this, and that's why I'm going to interject this. I got a message I'm going to preach soon, so you pretend like you never heard this, because I'm going to preach a message, Lord willing, soon, and I'm going to put this in it. But I was listening to a pastor by the name of Kevin Wallace. This pastor was a lot like this, pastoring a church similar to this. He 
took a church in the inner city, I think of somewhere in Tennessee. He began to pastor there. They ran into some issues with buildings and such as that. His goal was to do something very, very important in my opinion, and that was to have a diversified church. What do you mean by that? In other words, it wasn't just going to be an all-white church. It wasn't just going to be an all-Hispanic church or all-black church or all-whatever church. It was going to be a diversified church in a community that they had never seen this done before. We, some folks today call it the ghetto. But he set up shop, began to preach there. The church began to grow, but they faced some opposition. There was an extremely large Baptist church there. I forget how many thousands of square feet that this building was. The church closed down and they put it up for sale. It came an opportunity for them to possibly consider buying this church, but with their attendance, it was unrealistic. It didn't make any sense. Why would you even think about buying a building that big with this size congregation? You know how silly that is? You know how that don't make any sense? There were different people that were gainsaying possibly people within the church, some that didn't agree and some that were on board. But he began to pray about it and ask the Lord about this giant-sized Baptist church that had closed down. And it got real close to the wire. The real estate agent was trying to find out, are you wanting to buy the church or you guys want to attempt it? What, what do you want to do? And he said one day, this is what got to me. He said he went to the airport. He said an airport that he had been many, many, many times before. And he said he walked up to where they have those trams, I think it is, that, that, that open up the doors and you walk in and it takes you over to where your airplane, you're going to board the airplane and such as that. And he said he, as he stood there with those bags in his hands, and the tram pulled up. He was there with another brother in the church, if memory serves me right. And he said, all of a sudden, I have been in this airport. I can't tell you how many times he said, I heard something I'd never recall hearing ever before. And if I can get in the exact words that he said it, he said, as I stood there, he said, all of a sudden, a voice came across the intercom. And it said, please board the tram. Please walk through the doors because the door will soon close and it will not open again. And as he stood there, tears started running down his face. And his buddy was trying to grab a hold of him. Hey, man, what's wrong? He said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Lord just spoke to me. What would he say? He said, the Lord just told me. I'd never heard that before. He said, i got to walk through this door because the door is about to close and it won't open back up. You don't believe what I'm telling you? You log on, you can look for yourself. Pastor Kevin Wallace, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a massive church. They had church, and he said it was weird for the first couple of months because there was just that little congregation in that massive church. But you go look at it now. It's filled up with people worshiping God. And it all was because somebody was willing to take one simple step of faith. And I want to ask you tonight or this morning, how many of us, are willing to get on board with a vision with this church and say, God, let's push this thing forward. Let's Amen. see what the Lord will do. Amen. You got ministries in your loins? I want to tell you, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid. There's pastors, they get nervous if somebody in the church decides to have a church at their house. I ain't, I'm not afraid of that. They've been having Bible study. You know, I'm not afraid of that because I talk, like I said last night, you get full of the Lord, you get help there, you're going to be a bigger blessing here. Huh? That's what I believe. And that's how a lot of churches have grown. And I'm going to tell you, whatever you need to do, if you need to start having Bible study on your end of town, if you need to start having prayer meeting on your end of town, by all means, do whatever you need to do because I want to see God grow this church even bigger than it already is and see God keep moving. Amen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk you to death, preach you to death. I didn't get to preach for these last three days, so you know I got it all built up and I got to let it go a little bit. We're going to let you go, though. We're going to get, let, let you go. But we've got to receive the morning offerings and tithes this morning. We'll give you the opportunity. And you say, why, Pastor? Because we got bills to pay. And you've been kind and generous to this, this pastor and his family that came. But this church also has ministry needs and financial things that we need to take care of. And I want to give you an opportunity to give into the ministry of God to make sure that we can keep these lights on, the air condition going, keep everything taken good care of. I mentioned to you already, 
I mentioned to you already that at the end of this month, the last Saturday of this month, if I can pull it off, if we can pull everybody together, I want to have a work day. So all of you men that would like to help out with that, I want you to schedule that, put pen, pencil it in uh, so if you can do it. If, there, if I find out that the majority of the men that would normally come cannot come on that day, then I will look and reconsider. But oh, I want to try to tentatively plan for the last Saturday of this month for a work day. And Sister Myers, are we going to reschedule the ladies thing for the last? Okay, so basically everything we were going to do last month, we had to put off for the funeral service that was for the lady that, that had passed away after childbirth. Um, we want you to uh, reconsider and be a part of that. If God's done anything in you in this revival, don't let it fizzle out. Don't do, let, don't do like a two-liter soda and, and leave it on the counter and let it all let it lose its fizz. Keep jumping in. Keep getting what you need. Where at? All right. Something just crossed me. Where, when is it again? Say it again. The 16th of February. What time? Here. Say it again. February. All right. I say it a few times, you'll get it. I almost forgot to say this, and I want to tell you. You listen to it. If you feel like God's calling you to do something, if it's possible for us to fit it in, just like I told Sister Nora the other day, she said, Pastor, I don't really know. She's kind of looking at some possibilities or some things that are in her business. We talked a little bit about possibly it was maybe if you ever evolved into doing a ministry thing here, what I tell you. We work it out, find a schedule, you're more welcome to have it right here. What I'm telling you is, as long as you're doing it the way God would have you to do it, and you're bringing glory to the church and to the Christ and what you're doing, if you have something you want to do, come to me. Because I'm not, a, I'm not, a, and this is an opportunity that we, there's other people that rent this church. I'm telling you, you, you are part of this church. You can use the facility here. You say, Pastor, I've always wanted to have a group get together for, for you know, singles, or I've always wanted, I don't, I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? But if you want to do something, come to me. And all I ask you to do is make sure that if you want to do a ministry in this church, make sure you're consistent and you're faithful. Because if you want respect in ministry, you've got to be consistent and you've got to be faithful. If you're not, you need to work on that so you can be respected in what you're doing. People don't respect it. They won't show up. They won't want to hear you. They respect you. They'll come. All right. So we're going to receive the offering. Is there any, anything else that I'm forgetting about this morning? We want to keep in prayer uh, different people that have been mentioned throughout the revival. We want to keep the Gaskins in prayer. And Are we going to keep your brother in prayer? All right, Robert. Keep Robert in prayer. Hang on just a minute. And uh, anything else we can think of? Oh, while I'm thinking of it, I want to remind you that uh, I talked to Brother Gary and Sister Amanda on their way home, and he told me, he said, Pastor, he said, you don't believe this. He said, we got up there. They got up there in the travel, and when they got there, somebody had broken into the place and got in all his toolboxes and pried his toolboxes open and stole all kind of equipment and everything such as that and uh, just made a train wreck. And he said, Pastor, you want me to tell you what really hurt me the most? He said to see them thousands of dollar toolboxes with the lids and everything pried open, busted open like that. He said, just a mess. And he said, Pastor, I ain't going to tell no lie. He said, I got so upset. He said, I probably said a few things I shouldn't. He said, and all of a sudden I snapped back to myself and I said, nope, I ain't doing that. And he started giving the Lord praise. And he said the sister Amanda was just shocked because this is not the husband that she used to. And I want to tell you something. He was proud of what the Lord had done in him. And he told me, I forget now, I think he said it was 21 or 25. I think it was 25 days clean. 25 days clean. And I said, praise the Lord, brother. Thank God for 25 days clean. We're praying God keep helping, strengthening, using this family. I love all of you. If I can do anything for you, let me know. And uh, at this time, we want to do something very special. Uh, everybody in this church is very special. My family, they're like, you know, right there beside me. I, I get in trouble easy. Last night, I said something about my, the preacher mentioned all my family. Didn't include my daughter-in-law in that. He didn't mean to. And I said, and my beautiful daughter-in-law. And then next thing I know, I got Tracy over there, my adopted daughter. And she, uh, you go, well, don't forget me. And then I got TJ. And so, 
And before you know it, I'm going to have a whole church in here, all my, so y'all all belong to me. So if we ever have a preacher come and he starts naming off a family, y'all can just stand up and protest if you need to. Because <laughs> I love every one of you. I don't have no big eyes and little U's. All right, so at this time we're doing something special. We're going to open the door, get on the floor, and we ain't going to do the dinosaur. Open the door. Come on over and get you a hug, sis. Hallelujah. Let's give Sister Miranda and these young people a hand. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful thing. Glory to God. She got to open her card. Y'all won't get pictured, but she ain't want to ugly cry for y'all. She's. They say you're gonna have to turn around at least once so you can smile and they can catch that beautiful face of yours. Yeah, get on in there. Come on, come on, get with it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give one more hand this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Happy birthday. Everybody say, Happy birthday, Miranda. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we got to receive that offering. Well, praise the Lord. Now is an opportunity for us to give back a portion of what the Lord's blessed us with. Our 10%, our income increase that God's blessed us with. All right, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Thank you, honey. Beautiful. Uh, we want to give as given unto the Lord. When we have our work day, folks, we got, we're still working on our teen expansion room. We're going to be working, getting back involved with that. We got some other pro, uh, projects around this church. We're starting to get more and more qualified people to do different things in the church. And that is such a blessing to me because Pastor Myers has done a lot of stuff by myself and my boys, helping my kids over the years. And it's a blessing to me. So please don't, if you can be here for that, please plan to be there. I'm going to ask you to do me a special favor. As we get ready to pray, I've got a family member, my aunt, that was here the other night, sat right about over here. Not my aunt Norma, but my aunt Lisa. And I talked to her last night, and uh, my heart was just so broken. She's at a place that she just 
She really, really, really needs the Lord's touch. And I'm going to ask you to pray for me, at least, if you will, please. This afternoon, if you think of it, just ask the Lord to, to allow his will to be done and give her some comfort and strength because if you've ever been in that place, sometimes you get so down you don't even know how to get out. So please pray for her. Sister Myers, am I forgetting anything? I mean, we don't have church. We just shout. We just walk around, talk a whole lot. I mean, all that good stuff. Birthdays, cry, ugly cry. We don't at all. Anything else? All right. So off you. Stand to your feet. When you break routine, you get all messed up. <laughs> and you know what in the world you're doing. I'll take that any day over old boring run of the mill. Do the same thing. We're going to have you get ready and bring your offering up before put it in the offering pan. Sister Myers advised me I've got to put a little tab on the square machine for when we have visiting preachers, so I apologize we didn't have that set up, but we got it all worked out. If you use a square machine, you need help with it, let us know. And, uh, we just bless the Lord with a gift and an offering here this morning. Give all these folks that played and sang a hand this morning. Everybody's doing such a wonderful job. We get ready and bless the Lord. Brother David Mobley, come here for a minute, if you will, please. Hallelujah. I love all of our brothers and sisters. We're going to get ready and bless the Lord's offering this morning. This is a very serious thing. They don't take this lightly. This is how the church is maintained financially. And as you get ready to bring your offering, if you can't physically do it, pass it to somebody. Bring it up. Put it in these offering pans. If you visit the square machine, either way, go ahead and bless the Lord's offering, Brother David. Before you leave the service this morning, check in to your social media, share video, whatever. Well.